to keep the Philippines moving forward. Each of us plays a role in bringing about change that's greater than good. Greater than the good we can achieve alone. Greater than the good we can achieve with our current capabilities. Philippine civil society has long been the nation's partner in achieving positive change. It has made vital contributions to social development and nation building. From trailblazing innovative program designs and even establishing a mechanism for self-regulation widely recognized as a best practice in the world. But the potential of civil society to do greater good is achievable when the mechanisms for transparency, accountability, and effectiveness are robust within these organizations. To help fulfill this potential, USAID initiated the Strengthening the Capacity of Civil Society Organizations project. The project's goal to help civil society organizations become more capable in delivering sustainable and significant impact. USAID's involvement with civil society actually dates back several decades. USAID was one of the first that basically started an NGO support window dating back to around 1980. In 2010, we kind of looked at ourselves and basically examined uh, who we were partnering with and it dawned on us that uh, we needed to strengthen our partnerships with local organizations both in terms of the breadth and the scope and the number of partners that we would work with. Going local from my perspective is putting the host country in the driver's seat of the development process and that makes development more relevant for the country, for the Philippines in this particular case, and the impact more uh, direct, tangible to everyone who participates, and of course, more sustainable. We have all kinds of small nonprofits, small civil society organizations in the provinces who provide much needed services, much appreciated services by the communities, but they don't know how to access or they cannot pass the standards of larger donors. You know, a lot of philanthropists say, we get all kinds of proposals, but how do we know whether these organizations are well run, whether they're accountable, whether they're transparent? This is the kind of project that provides them the opportunity to be that, to be able to do that. We made a conscious decision to focus capacity building because we could do capacity building in health. We could do capacity building in education, but we felt that the NGO community out there, a lot of them were already very strong in these areas. What we wanted to strengthen was organizational management. And that's essentially the genesis of the project. USAID partnered with a consortium of institutions widely acknowledged as leaders in the development sector. Each consortium member brought its experience and expertise to the partnership. Their task to design and implement an organizational development framework, tools, and capacity building interventions that will result in more effective civil society organizations. This organizational development framework helped the participating CSOs improve on various levels. How do we safeguard the trust of the people we serve? By ensuring that our organization operates with legal and moral legitimacy and maintains credibility. How do we see our responsibility through with integrity? By being openly accountable for and continuously improving our performance, our finances, and our advocacies. How do we encourage trust in our systems? By being forthright when sharing quality information on our activities, resources, processes, and outputs to others. How do we function like a well-oiled machine? By using appropriate methods and structures that optimize our resources in achieving our vision and mission. To strengthen our organizations, we needed a viable blueprint. The capacity building framework provides the architecture for achieving our goals and desired organizational outcomes. A strong foundation begins by understanding the current state of our organization. A capacity assessment tool was developed to help organizations undergo self-assessment to identify what they're doing well and what they can do better in different capacity areas. The capacity assessment tool went through a process that 
was very participative. So therefore, it took into consideration a lot of perspectives from the consortium members, from the experiences of those who sat down to take a look at how best to assess. It's important because it's a starting point. Getting to know where you are. The first time that you do it provides you the baseline data. And you, you know where you are. The CAT has taken into consideration more than what USDA has required. Our indicators took into consideration a lot of the Philippine context, the Philippine laws, etc. The results of the diagnosis then became the basis for developing a capacity building plan geared towards improving on the strengths and closing the gaps. One style doesn't fit all. CSOs were given options to choose interventions that were most responsive to their needs. These options included formal training, mentoring, peer learning, exposure to best practices, and provision of templates. Interventions were made in key areas, governance and leadership, and strategic management. Resource mobilization and development. Program design, implementation and management, and monitoring and evaluation. Financial management. Administrative management and human resource. These interventions resulted in better capacitated CSOs. Guided by the framework, CSOs would have been able to achieve sustainable and significant impact, become relevant and accountable to its stakeholders, and effectively compete for and manage donor resources. We now have a comprehensive framework and a tool for assessing and strengthening civil society organizations that will make them compliant with Philippine laws, that will ensure that there's transparency and accountability in their systems. A big accomplishment of the project is now we have civil society organizations that have gone through the process and who can now help other organizations within their sphere of influence. In the last 47 years of MASPEC, we have not been invited to participate in a strengthening program. This is the first time actually, you know, so we were able to in place some manuals, policies, and processes that we have not done before. When USAID Film Fund NUPAS was conducted with SGV, we did not really find it so difficult because of our of the past intervention for this project. Three days before the grand signing, we were informed that we passed, we passed under the cash advance scheme. You know, when you take a look at the capacity assessment tool and then you go through uh, all the elements of the tool, then you realize that there were a number of, uh, there a number of uh, tools wherein you have not attended to, or you are lacking, or needs upgrading. And it gives you an idea or self-reflection to be able to say, given all these things, what is your contribution to the national impact? After three years of implementing the Capacity Building Interventions Framework, over 100 CSOs now have improved policies, systems, and procedures to become more transparent, accountable, and sustainable. Through the expertise of each consortium member, the willingness of our 40 volunteer mentors and resource persons, the commitment of the board, management and staff of the participating CSOs, and the generous resources provided by USAID, participating CSOs are closer to delivering greater, more sustainable, and more substantial impact. Beyond empowering over 100 participating CSOs, the project leaves behind a capacity building framework and tools that other civil society organizations can use. A pool of civil society leaders trained in organizational development and CSO networks that are better able to capacitate their own members. We now have a pool of civil society leaders who were trained 
in OD, organizational development, organizational change. And because of their commitment to the sector, they will always be there as a resource pool that can be called upon to assist CSOs. It was very fulfilling to see that some of their, their beliefs have changed in terms of what to do and what not to do. That's the most important thing for me as a mentor. Passing new pass, it's a validation of their hard work. This is our legacy. It's such a fulfilling experience that we're able to come up with a tool and be able to support this project that in the end will, will basically help the NGOs push it a little bit further. It's really not just the NGOs as the end you know, uh, beneficiary, but really the partner communities of which these NGOs actually serve. And it's really being able to improve the quality of life of the Filipino people. New organizations as partners may be a high risk, but it's worth it. They bring to the table things that we ourselves and previous partners are not able to. They bring a diversity of ideas and innovation that we would never be able to achieve if we keep working with the same groups over and over and if we talk to ourselves only. In fact, I have talked a lot about this project in our efforts that it has gone beyond the Philippine shores. Uh, my other um, peers in other USAID around the world have learned about this project. Some of them have copied the um, request for proposals and are doing this also in their own missions. I hope that this will continue and we will be able to influence much more than the numbers that we have now. And maybe one year down the road, they will even improve on what we have done. Empowering CSOs to be greater than good so that our nation can be greater than it was yesterday and greater than it is today.